The winter storm hitting central and eastern Canada travel throughout the region has been impacted. Highways have been shut down and we're hearing multiple reports that via rail passengers have been stuck on trains for as long as 16 hours. This is the scene at a rail station in Ottawa this morning where there are long lines and delays. Hundreds of passengers were trapped on via rail trains between Ottawa and Toronto overnight. And we have a statement now from Via Rail about what is happening along the Quebec City Windsor corridor. It says this from power outages to trees on the tracks and even a tree falling on a locomotive conditions make it impossible to move some of our trains. Our first priority is the safety of our passengers. And although stopped, our trains are able to keep passengers warm and safe while on board. We are continuing to work with our teams and our infrastructure owner to either get those trains trains moving as quickly as possible or bring them to their final destination with new equipment. Now, VO Rail says passengers on the affected trains will be given a full refund. The CBC's Itho Musa is watching the situation unfold in Toronto, the impact of the cold weather and winter storm. She tells us what the city can expect from the weather today. Yeah, you know, you were mentioning how it's going to get down with the wind chill to minus 30 and about the wind chills in Quebec, but we're going to feel it here as well when it comes to wind gusts. We're expecting wind gusts of up to 80 kilometers an hour as well. And Environment Canada is also warning people that there might be low visibility as well because of all the snow and that wind. In fact, there is a winter weather travel advisory in effect. So drivers, of course, are being told if they can stay off the road, but if you have to drive, do it slowly. They say the changing weather conditions throughout the day uh, not only is going to cause low visibility, but it's going to impact uh, the roads. The city is salting major roads and highways, but they could remain icy and very, very slippery throughout the day. And Etho, what is the city doing to protect those living on the streets during the storm? Yeah, it is very, very cold outside right now. You know, the, the city, the city's medical officer of health has issued an extreme cold weather alert. And Natalie, what that does is it triggers the opening of warming centers. There are three that are open. In fact, I'm standing outside one of them. It can house up to 150 people. This is where people can go, not only just to stay warm, but there's, they, they have access to washrooms. They're going to have snacks here as well to, to help keep people fed. And there'll also be people on hand hand to help uh, refer people to emergency shelters. Now, the mayor earlier today spoke about these uh, warming centers. John Tory also talked about some of the challenges of getting people to go there. Oftentimes, uh, the people who decline service and who are sleeping on the street are people who've had many, many challenges in their lives, and not the least of which often is uh, challenges with mental health. Uh, but, uh, you know, that has been made worse, uh, and the concerns have been made worse by the fact that sometimes they would have had their uh, material possessions, which they often have with them taken from them. There would be uh, sometimes just incidences of unrest that happen in the, in the shelter. I mean, they're not usually violent, but they're just people who are uh, sometimes having episodes in their own lives. Yeah, so, you know, some people, of course, do prefer to be outside. They feel safer there. But the city also says that they've opened up additional spaces, Natalie, in existing shelters to try and get more people inside as this sort of cold snap just continues. CBC's Ethel Musa in Toronto. And let's return now to that developing story on via rail trains. We've reached one of the stranded passengers on the train from Toronto to Ottawa. Kelly Crow is a former CBC reporter. She joins us now live. Thank you, Kelly, on the phone uh, for taking our call, speaking with us. What's the current situation where you are on the train right now? Well, it's uh, approaching 17 hours. Uh, we're sitting in uh, a field. All I can see out the window are uh, it's, uh, essentially whiteout conditions. And we're waiting. At this point, we're waiting for um, a, a new crew to arrive. But the crew has not been able to get uh, transportation here because taxis couldn't get through the snow to get to them in Kingston. So they're driving themselves. So we've been waiting a couple of hours. This is our third new crew because the uh, train is, you know, the trip has been so long that the engineers keep uh, running to their maximum uh, duty hours. So, uh, yeah, 
an interesting trip. So, the, you know, normally that trip between uh, Toronto and Ottawa is about five hours or so, four and a half, five hours. As you said, you're marking and on 17 hours now. It was going relatively smoothly. <laughs> what happened? Well, it was going fairly smoothly and, uh, uh, until we got to um, Coburg. Now, they were already going slowly because the uh, level crossings, you know, the flashing lights, uh, to warn cars and train that's coming by, they were having to be manually uh, turned, uh, turned on and off by the people on the train. So they had to keep jumping off to, to make sure that those crossing lights were on. So that was slowing us down to begin with. Then we got to Coburg where there was a power outage. So that meant that all of the trains were now going single file through the station. So the eastbound trains had to wait while the westbound trains went through. And uh, as we were waiting... That's when train 55 got hit by a tree and remains stuck in Coburg with a tree crashed through the windshield. Now, we had trees on our tracks, too, but the, um, the, the train staff got some axes out, and, and, and one of the uh, staff said they were playing lumberjack as they cleared the trees. So that got us uh, through Coburg. Then we got to Trenton, where there was another tree. We had to pass the station and back up into it. And then uh, we ran into um, a crew, uh, the crew change, so we had to wait for Train 48 to join us so their crew could take it a little bit. Further. Then we hit a frozen switch, <laughs> and we're getting a, an update as I'm speaking. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, we cannot, we cannot, but it does sound like one thing after another, Kelly. Essentially, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yourself and other passengers on board facing. And as you said, you had to spend the night on the train last night. What was that like? Well, it, it, was, it was one of those um, sort of situations that evolved in slow motion. So we didn't know we were going to be on the train all night. We just knew that we weren't moving. And we kept, it kept getting longer and longer and longer until it became obvious that we were going to watch the sun come up on the train. And, and now it looks like we're hitting, we're going to see uh, lunch hour on the train, although there's no food and water being distributed. Uh, there, there were a few things handed out earlier, but we're hearing that they've run out, so we're not really getting any services. Um, people, you know, good Canadians are polite and cheerful, and the staff on our car have been very, you know, friendly and apologetic. But, um, yeah, it's not what you would have chosen <laughs> for sure what have you heard from those uh, staff those crew on your train well it doesn't sound like they're getting much information either uh they were using the same sort of watch your train in real time service that i was using to see if we were going to be moving uh all the trains that uh, were on that list uh that are stuck left yesterday those trains have fallen off the radar so we don't have any information uh, even about where we are exactly, although we know that we're somewhere outside of the Napanee station. Do you feel there's any end in sight? Any hint? Uh, uh, apparently, the what did they just say? The, okay, the, the, the third crew, as I said, this is their third, have arrived. They've driven themselves to this field, and they're apparently on the train doing a safety check. So... Uh, that's that's a good sign. Um, <laughs> we'll see w w if we encounter any other issues like frozen switches or, uh, or other issues. Well, Kelly Crow, we wish you well. Thank you so much. Kelly Crow is a stranded passenger on a Via Rail train and a former CBC reporter.